Hello, my name is Mariana Martinez, and today I'm going to be discussing the poem Quintanera by Judith Ortiz Coper. Allow me to read you the poem. My dolls have been put away like dead children in a chest I will carry with me when I marry. I reach under my skirt to feel a satin slip bought for this day. It is soft as the inside of my thighs. My hair has been nailed back with my mother's black hairpins to my skull. Her hand stretched my eyes open as she twisted braids into a tight circle at the nape of my neck. I am to wash my own clothes and sheets from this day on as if the fluids of my body were poison, as if the trickle of blood I believe travels from my heart to the world were shameful. Is not the blood of saints and men in battle beautiful? Do Christ's hands not bleed into your eyes from his cross? At night, I hear myself growing and wake to find my hands drifting of their own will to soothe skin stretched tight over my bones. I am wound like the guts of a clock, waiting for each hour to release me. So, upon reading the poem, the first initial feeling I had was deja vu to when I turned 15 years old. Throughout the poem, I found the prominent theme that was presented was the coming of age of a 15-year-old girl. By the coming of age, what I really mean is womanhood. You know, the reason why I feel the theme is coming of age is because there's so many instances in the poem that foreshadow womanhood. The first instance that illustrates the theme is when the narrator states, my dolls have been put away like dead children in a chest I will carry with me when I marry. My interpretation of this moment is that the narrator is portraying how she feels about womanhood. It's almost as if she's saying she's not ready. Yet I also feel like she's trying to foreshadow quinceañeras here. You know, as a Hispanic myself, I'm very aware of the typical quinceañera celebration. One of the most common traditions in a quinceañera is that when you're 15 and you are on it's your quinceañera day you're typically given given a doll your last doll and the dolls typically wear in the same ball gown dress as you and it's given during during that day to you in front of all your family and friends gathered gathered around it's typically like in a plastic like little bag and it's presented to you and it's your last doll and so I feel like she's trying to foreshadow this particular event in saying that her dolls are going to be put away. I'm not sure if Kofor was trying to use this as an interpretation here. And typically the doll is supposed to symbolize the end of your childhood and the beginning of womanhood. Secondly, the narrator states, I am to wash my own clothes and sheets from this day on as if the fluids of my body were poison, as if the little trickle of blood I believe travels from my heart to the world were shameful. My interpretation of this moment is that the narrator is complaining of the duties you have as an adult. To be specific, she's complaining about having to do her own laundry. Here, the narrator feels as though the reason her mother does not want to do her laundry anymore is because of the fluids of her body, which is not the reason it's actually because she's developing and not developing, but she's coming to a new, I guess you could say era, like a new time. She's her mom's trying to prepare her into womanhood. Like she's not a child anymore. She's turning 15. Like we like you need to start developing these routines. And so I believe the narrator here is trying to imply the bleeding here is the bleeding on her sheets is from the blood from the, the girl's menstrual cycle. Further in the poem, the narrator states, At night I hear myself growing and wake to find my hands drifting of their own will to soothe skin stretched tight over my bones. I am wound like the guts of a clock waiting for each hour to release me. My interpretation of this moment is that the narrator is describing how her body is changing. I personally feel like the narrator is implying she's at the age of puberty. I found how Coffer compared the narrator to a clock to be one of the most interesting moments of the poem. I just thought, wow, like, you know, a clock, it's constantly changing time. 
with these little like tick marks and really Coffer's trying to like compare the girl to a clock here and as I said Coffer's trying to imply the comparison of the narrator's body to be constantly changing. While reading the poem I had a clear idea of what was going on. In Quinceanera by Judith Ortiz Coffer Kofer used many literary devices to make the poem come to life. One of the first devices I noticed in the poem was hyperbole. The narrator stated, My hair has been nailed back with my mother's black hairpins to my skull. Here the narrator is given an exaggeration of how tight the pins feel to her head. You know, I can imagine like, I, as, a, as a girl myself and my mom did my hair, Growing up, I remember whenever she would do my hair, how like she'd put those pins in and it felt like they were like jabbing into my head. So I can relate to this exaggeration, this hyperbole. I also noticed the poem used many similes. My personal favorite was when the narrator stated, my dolls have been put away like dead children in a chest I will carry with me when I marry. Here the narrator is showing comparing her dolls to dead children in a chest the narrator is implying how her child how her childhood days are over and she is not to be playing with her dolls anymore it feels as though the narrator is not ready for her childhood years to be over as she states she will carry them when she marries so i can relate to this part here you know whenever i turned 15 i was really upset you know you're like the celebration is for womanhood and you put your dolls away at a certain age and then you just don't touch them anymore. Like you might touch them, as she said, when you like you'll carry them around with you and then like maybe you'll carry them around with you until you marry. And then perhaps you'll get those dolls out of that chest and they'll be going to your daughter, you know, like I, I see I see where she's coming from here. Further, I noticed the poem also included imagery. The narrator stated, her hand stretched my eyes open as she twisted braids into a tight circle at the nape of my neck. Here I get a vivid picture of what exactly is going on. I can imagine how tightly her mom is braiding her hair in order for it to not fall out. You know, a typical quinceanera celebration lasts a minimum of six hours. So it's very important to keep your hair intact or else by the time you get to the event, because it starts out with church and then you go take pictures and then you go to the actual event to eat and then it's the dance and then it's the cake so it's like several hours implemented in a day to host this quinceanera and if your hair is not intact then it's not gonna look great so I see what she means by her hands stretch my eyes open so I can imagine like her mom's over here like braiding her hair super tight and it feels like her eyes are like going you know what I mean I feel like I see I see what she's trying to say and I I could pick like picture this really vividly in my head upon reading this now a little bit about the poem is that when I first chose which poem to analyze the first poem that spoke to me was Quinceanera by Judith Ortiz Coffer the title of the poem got my attention right away Upon first looking at the poem's title, my first thought was questioning a quinceanera's poem. You know, I was like, looking through the list and I was like, a quinceanera's poem. I was like, hmm, this is going to be interesting. I feel like the poem's title was really eye-catching to me because I've always been a fan of going to quinceaneras as a Hispanic myself. So, the title of the poem seems to connect with the poem, yet not at the same time. At first... I thought the poem would be happy and cheerful. The day of a quinceanera is typically a cheerful day as it is ce celebrating the coming of womanhood with your loved ones by your side. However, upon reading the short poem, I noticed the tone appeared sad and dark throughout the entire poem. You know, I personally liked the short poem, Quinceanera by Judith Ortiz Coffer. Lately, I've been getting into short poems. I feel more engaged in short poems rather than regular poems. They're short, sweet, and simple. And I can really tell that Copper put much work into this piece. 
Upon reading the poem by Judith Ortiz Coffer, I decided to research her background to perhaps get an idea of her reasoning for her poem. After much research, I found that Coffer was born in Puerto Rico. As a young girl, she spent much of her time living with her grandmother as her father was absent in her life due to military. As her father was in the military, she was often stationed in the United States. She moved from Puerto Rico to the United States numerous times. However, during her teenage years, at the age of 15, her world was completely turned around as her family moved from the United States to the state of Georgia. At the age of 15, Kofer had been introduced to two different cultures, a Puerto Rican culture and an American culture. It is because of the split cultures that we can thank Kofer for her great works as quinceanera and for all of her other writings about her cultural struggles as a Latina. Additionally, when doing my research, I also found that she was known to be an advocate of social justice and of writers of color, to be specific for a woman of color. After reading the short poem by Judith Ortiz Kofer and researching her background, I really got a better understanding of who she really was. I really feel like the battle throughout the poem here is childhood versus adulthood. And you know, I I really feel like the poem has a connection to her. Moreover, I really feel like Kofer is trying to convey how emotional the transition of a girl's childhood to womanhood is in the poem. I would consider the life lesson that is given in the poem to be how life is full of changes and how sometimes you're not ready for those changes, but you just have to go with the flow. The poem is to be interpreted as emotional. At first, the narrator mentions her dolls and how they will be stored away. Additionally, this, the narrator mentions that she will be doing her laundry from that day forward. Here she, imply, she is implying she's not ready for the responsibilities of womanhood. You can tell the narrator feels as if she's saying goodbye to her childhood years. My main takeaway from this poem is how emotional can be how emotional quinceañeras can be for 15 year olds. In conclusion, every 15 year old girl feels different about a quinceañera. While some girls feel unprepared for their childhood to be left behind, others are ready for the transition of womanhood. While many people believe a quinceañera is just a typical birthday party for 15 year olds, a quinceañera is much more than that. A quinceañera is a celebration of the coming of age of womanhood. Thank you for watching.